We're we excited money. to have the legend, Lloyd Squires, also known around the world as the King's Clown. Bo Squires, we can't tell you hey. how excited we are to have you here. Hey, Mosey. Hi, Moses. Hi. Hi, Brother Squires. Welcome. Thank you. I got the int- I got the privilege of introducing you today. You are the best of the best, and we thought, what better way to start our interviews on kidsministrytraining.com than interviewing the one who started so much of this stuff, you. <laughs> and we want to start by saying thank you, thank you, thank you for taking your time and talking with us. You know, we love you. My honor, my privilege. So, round one. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, right. Squires. Yes, sir. I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Brother Shiny Hat. Go ahead, Brother David. We have Go ahead, so David. many things that we want to talk to you about, but we want to start with, matter of fact, Brother Moses, you started. I know you were talking earlier about some things that you want to ask because I've got like a thousand questions, but we'll have to go <laughs> into a bunch more interviews with those. Brother Squires, I got my hat on just for you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the webinar today. Thank you, yes, Brother sir. David. You're awesome. Brother David Moore is also a children's evangelist. But it's awesome to have Brother Squires here with us today. And we want to ask you a question, Brother Squires. Okay. How did you become the King's Clown? Hey, before yeah. I do that, can I show you my new mask? Sure. Okay. A lady at the ch- a church made this for me overnight and gave it to me. Wow. Moses. Nice. What do, you, what do you think? I think it's awesome. It's perfect. Hey, David, now I can do ventriloquism. Nobody can see my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hi, kids. How you been? <laughs> <laughs> I had to share that with you guys. That's awesome. Thank you, bro. So how I became a clown. Thank you, brother Moses. Um, uh, let me just start. I was born in 1949. Um, at um, age 17, I joined the U.S. Navy, 1967. Um, I had a rough childhood, as many people know. Uh, and then I had a rough Navy hood, but that was my fault. And uh, graduated the Navy okay. Then I went to Bible school at Gateway College. I went to other colleges for other things as well, uh, computer stuff. I have two degrees in computer technology. And um, then I, and then so in 1973, Karen and I got married. In 19, and in two short years, we were ready for a divorce because I was a hopeless alcoholic. And she had to keep bailing me out of jail and all that stuff and drugs and all that. And so a lady that we knew, actually her best friend from forever, uh, got the Holy Ghost and sat me down and looked at me. And I never really understood how this worked. But she just looked at me with a tear in her eye and said, Jesus loves you just for you. And it changed my life. And so uh, they went to church. Uh, so I went, got the Holy Ghost. Poor Karen is about seven months later. She just wanted to make sure it would stick on me. <laughs> so in 75, April 27, three days ago, uh, two days ago, uh, uh, I received the Holy Ghost, evidence speaking in tongues, spoke in tongues for about 45 minutes, had a vision of Jesus because I'd never read his Bible or been to church or sang his songs i had a vision of Cal- Cal- calvary and uh, which set the mood for my entire uh, holy ghost life holy spirit uh, life and i went to gateway and uh, there's no harm or foul in anybody but all they had all the greats come in because headquarters is right there you know and so they had all the greatest uh, ministries and all that stuff missionaries and uh they all these boys and girls that were going to this bible college yeah I was almost 30. I had already fought in the war and all that stuff and I fought at home and fought in the war. And so I wasn't really there to play. I had my own home, my own wife. Uh, I paid my bills and all that stuff. And uh, I just wasn't, I, I, it wasn't that I wasn't impressed with everybody. It just wasn't me. So I can sing, I can play, I can preach. Uh, since the day I got the Holy Ghost, Moses, uh, I, I would I would venture to say I've seen somebody get the Holy Ghost every single day. Wow. And then after two years of being saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, praying, fasting, um, 
I got, I got disillusioned. I got like, okay, where's my place? David, you know, I was thinking I, I can do that, but that's not me. And so I'm a special operative, special forces. And so I guess what I was asking for really was uh, my mission. And so I was at the time, 27 years old. Uh, it was 1970. No, I was, how old was I? 27, 1977. Wow. And uh, I began to fast and pray. Now, I don't call it fast. I don't say, oh, Jesus, you're so lucky. I'm going to do a three-day fast. I just go in a fast, and he ends it. I go fast until, okay? And so, turns out it was a 40-day fast, which I had no idea I wasn't counting. Uh, Karen was. And um, at the end of the 40 days, I was so hungry. My belly button was hanging onto my backbone, saying, don't leave me now, Bubba. You're all I got left. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very hungry. And it wasn't big anyway. I was only 140 pounds at the time wow. before the fast. And so going to college, working two or three jobs, doing going to church four times a week uh, and fasted 40 days. And then one day I walked across the street because my neighbor lady was having a rummage sale. And Christians, you know, we love rummage sales. So I was just going to go over and help her set up tables and stuff. And I'm, uh, and I'm hungered, you know. I did drink water. And so... <laughs> because <laughs> the Bible says Jesus hungered, never says he thirsted when he did 40 days. So I just tried to do that. Anyway, where was it? Oh, yeah. So she was setting up tables. And then she said, this little old grandma lady doesn't know nothing about nothing, doesn't know what I'm doing or anything. She says, honey, I'm going to go in. I want to get you something. Uh, and, and I want to give it to you. I don't want to. I was going to sell it, but I want to give it to you. And so when she went in her little house, the Holy Ghost of God spoke to me. Uh, I wouldn't say audibly, although I have heard him audibly, but it was just clear as a bell. Um, this is it. What she hands you is going to be your lifelong ministry. Wow. And so I was so excited, man. And uh, <laughs> she came out with a big grocery bag, the paper sack, you know, the big one. And she handed it to me. And she said, honey, I made this for my husband. He wore it one time before he died. <laughs> and I went, oh, no, I'm going to have the ministry of death. Doesn't it look <laughs> like itself? <laughs> And mm -hmm. I reached in there and pulled out the ugliest, nastiest, black and orange clown suit, handmade, you've ever seen. And it was black on one side, orange on the other, black and orange ruffles around here and here and ankles, a full, a full suitor. And the zipper was in the back. Why in the world they did that? They used, David, when they started, when I started, that's how all the clown suits were. And it's a wonder I have kidneys left. But anyway... I was so upset. I was, I was hurt. My feelings got hurt. And I, I mumbled, thank you, grandma. And I went to the house and I set that bag on the, on the table. Now, Karen, as you guys know, and you can attest, she's uh, a very warm, but shy, introverted lady. She's normal. Okay. Not like me at all. Yep. And she said, what do you got there? And I said, it's my ministry. And she's like, well, you don't sound too happy about it. <laughs> And uh, so I went into my room, uh, and I don't think I've ever told this part of the story before, but I, uh, at some point I went into my room before I put it on, and I did seek the Lord, and he gave me a uh, prophecy of today, right now, uh, 44 years later, that I would be doing this sort of thing. And I knew everything from the, uh, the end from the beginning, I guess because I had to. The Lord was merciful to me. And uh, I think if you fast 40 days, he probably... <laughs> It probably helped you out a little. And uh, yeah, so I came out and she had the thing out. And oh, the lady had a black straw hat with a with a blonde wig, with a white wig and yellow fuzzy. They weren't duck shoes, but they looked like it. Yellow fuzzy house slippers. And that was the clown suit. Oh, man, it was it was hideous. And I, I didn't know what to say, you know, and she said, uh, well, you've got this sitting on the kitchen table here. You can either pick it up or you can just keep fasting. <laughs> Stomach said, hmm. Um, so I don't know how she did it, but Moses, she coerced me to put it on. And I put the whole thing on. I came out of our little bedroom. And I will never forget what Karen said. And I quote, <laughs> that's hilarious. And I'm like, hush. She, she hurt my feelings, Moses. And I, you know, I was man, you know, and 
all that. And the Lord knew. He just knew. And so she, she laughed me out of the house. And so I went out on my little porch. You know how we did when we were younger. Woman, I'm going outside. <laughs> and I stood on my little porch and I heard this sound. Slam, click. <laughs> Deal with it, clown. <laughs> and she was telling me stuff like, your per you know, you studied... Uh, Red Skelton and Jerry Lewis and all the Danny Kay and all the funny people, the black and white uh, television shows or whatever as a kid. And uh, she said, you're just perfect for it. And so I was standing out there kind of banging on the front door and I felt this tug. I don't know. if I, You know what? You know, I should have got a clown suit for this. Uh, have you got a second? It's right here. Yeah. We got Can you edit this? Okay, hang on. Oh, yeah. You know, Brother Alvarez, he... um. He actually had a birthday recently. Yeah, he's 46 years old. In the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. You birthed. <laughs> I think there's a couple more years when you add the age, but he, he had a 46th birthday. I mean, think about that. He's had the Holy Ghost for 46 years. So um, I think we'll have to ask him. But Squires, if you had yeah. your birthday, it was what, 46, right? You've had the Holy Ghost yeah. 46 years? So, I mean, you've been ministering 45? 44, yes, sir. 44, 44. okay. Because I knew it wasn't long afterwards, so. Two years, yeah, uh, ish. Hmm? Uh, I don't have a clown clown suit. Um, uh, next next uh, time we interview, I'll bring one. It, it's a one cool. piece, okay? And it's got the sleeves and the legs. It's all one piece. And so I'm standing out there. It was in the spring, um, about this time of year, a couple months earlier. And... <laughs> I felt this tug. They're kind of blousey, these, these old clown suits. They're not oh. skin tired. They're, they're a little blousey. And I felt this tug on the back of my black and orange clown suit. And I'm so mad. <laughs> I turned around. And there wasn't anybody there. So I turned around, banging on the door. And I feel this tug a little higher up. And I look down. And we got an amber alert. How do I turn that off? There you go. Okay. Um, I looked down, and it was this midget. It was like this human being, but he was only like that tall. Like that tall. They called them children. <laughs> I never really noticed them before. <laughs> and he's, uh, it's, it's cold. He's, he's got a glazed donut look going down his nose, a runny nose. And uh, he says, hey, Cloud, do something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and the front door cracked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cloud. <laughs> and so... <laughs> he's like they're like trained fleas kids you know they just started showing up in my yard and backed me up against this big tree we had in the front yard and there then in there now i had preached like i told you and and lots of people had received the holy ghost on buses in the street just wherever you know I, i'm a soul winner you know it's just the way it goes and so i had preached and i preached pretty big things pretty a lot of little things and uh, so I have been anointed to preach before and to sing and play. But, dude, I started putting on a little show for these kids just off the top of my head. And it was an anointing. It was a special anointing. It was my anointing. And so when people say, Brother Squires, I wish I was like you, don't. Be like you. Find your place in Jesus' kingdom. I'm not asking you to fast 40 days. I don't know what Jesus is asking from you. But you're going to have to... It, you know, we have all these big things about prayer. What happened to fasting and prayer? And so Jesus said, that's what it takes. And so I put on this show. And uh, then the same little kid, he says, hey, clown. I said, what? He said, you got a Sunday school? And I said to the front door, do we got a Sunday school? I've, never, I, I've been in church two years and never seen it. I never even knew it was there. And uh, <laughs> true story. And so that's how you know. It's not what you think you're going to do. It's not, well, I like this, or he's good at that, I'll try. No, it was God all the way. And people say, how, do, how have you kept this for 44 years? I didn't give it to me, and I can't take it away. You didn't give it to me, you can't take it. Well, I can if I stop, but I, I refuse. And it, every day I wake up and know I'm in the perfect will of God. I'm going to say that again. Wow. Every day, thank the Lord, I wake up and I know that I'm in the perfect will of God. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, sure enough, 
him and his eight, nine, ten, I don't know, there's there's like a bunch of twelve. Let's say let's say a dozen kids. <clears throat> yeah, a dozen kids from my neighborhood uh said, Okay, we'll be here. It was Saturday. So we'll be here at nine o'clock in the morning, take us to church. And boom, they left. They left. So I looked in my driveway, I had one vehicle. Got 14 of us to take to church tomorrow, and I got a, a two seater Mustang. I own a Mustang. That was it. And it's only got two seats in it. So I can't take them there. So we did check with their parents and all that. So I got my car, still fasting, hadn't eaten yet. And I said, I need a car. So I'm a Ford guy, Mustangs, and I had six or seven of them. And so I'm driving down, you know, they have this lane where they sell this, that, all the cars. And so I'm driving to the Ford station and the Holy Ghost says, pull in there. It was the Chevy station. Dun, dun, dun. And so I pulled in there and I told the, I asked for the manager or owner. And uh, I don't know who he was, but some guy came out and I'm, I'm still like weeping and crying and I'm still in the clown suit. And I told him this exact <laughs> I told him this exact same story. I told him the whole thing, the fasting, getting the Holy Ghost, all of it. Wow. And he said, well, he said, well, you're not going to believe this. He said, we just got a van in, you know, a 12 passenger van or whatever it was, a Chevy van. And uh, he said, let me see what I can do for you. Long and short, he gave me the van and let me keep my car. He gave it to me. Yeah, he, the Chevy guy gave me wow. the van. I, I promise. And so mm -hmm. next day, we're getting loaded up and all the kids, and Karen brings that bag. And I said, I don't need that bag. She said, well, just bring it. So sure enough, side of my church, there's a little stairwell, st uh, stairwell going down to the basement. I've never been in there before. And I brought my little ducks in a row, my 12 little ducks, and uh, had the bag, walked in, I opened the door, and the Sunday school director said, oh, I called my pastor, of course. To tell him what was going on and uh the uh, son, Sunday school director said oh uh you you're here with your kids there's your room over there and so we had a separate room for the bus kids they called them and it was fine with me fine with me and I began my ministry that day well the day before by the tree but those kids prayed them all through many are in ministry and, and all of that stuff right then and there and then all of that was in the will of God you know, if the Sunday school director directs you, you take that direction. If the pastor directs you, you take that direction. Because, uh, you know, obedience is way better than sacrifice. And I've learned that the hard way. Uh, so, yeah. So that's, uh, and 24,000 souls later, you know, um, I still know that I'm in the will of God. So I, I beg every single one of us to find our place. Because the truth is, if you're not in your place in God's kingdom, you're in somebody's way. You're not just hurting you, but everything be done decently and in order. You're hurting everything. If you're just bouncing around, you know, trying to find, trying to do better than somebody else or whatever. So that's my story of how I became a clown. What do you think? You know what I love best about this part of your life is we run into people all the time that think in order to get in kids ministry, you have to have a special personality. You have to have a personality type. You have to have this, this burden for kids, or you got to have something special. And my story, some matter of fact, my first clown suit was white and red split wow. down the middle, polka dots on both sides with, a, yes. I, I And I'm looking at this, I, this is awful. At least it wasn't purple and black. So I had a little bit upgrade. <laughs> I didn't have a special thing for kids. I didn't know anything. They're just like, oh, you should dress up like this go. And I'm like, okay. Matter of fact, when we started knocking the first doors, it was like, well, we're starting puppets and starting clowns. We didn't have anything to go on. We just trying to get kids there. And I yeah. love that you are, you're probably known as the greatest children's minister of all time and with all these kids prayed through and all these things it started from somebody who didn't even know kids were around that's what i love about this it's not yeah. the skill set that god pulls it's the person who's willing to do something yeah and it was a a, a much needed ministry and not in just our church bro nobody did it yeah. the uh, catholics had schools 
but there wasn't a, any such thing as children's ministry. And uh, not to put Sunday school down, I believe in Sunday mm -hmm. school, but there is yeah. a definite difference. And so uh, 40 years later, Stephen Cannon and his crew changed uh, Sunday school to children's ministry. Yep. And I banged that drum faithfully. I never fought with anybody, uh, you know, ever. And I, tr trust me, put on a clown suit and take the pulpit in 1977 when the pastor's oh. wife has an oatmeal box on top of her hair, inside her hair. Uh, tried that one time. And so I heard a lot of things, but mm -mm, no way, I'm not returning that because you didn't give it to me and you can't take it. I can only let it go. Listen to me. what you got. If God gave it to you, only you can let it go. Don't do that. Don't be like that lady from Frozen. You know, that's why they can't give her a balloon because she'll just let it go. Let it go. Elsa. Is that Elsa? Yes. Anyway, somebody. Yes, yes. So. Yes. Keep her cartoon straight. <laughs> I can't stay serious this long. <laughs> but I am serious about finding your place. And you cannot do it. Nobody can give it to you. But Jesus Christ. And, and again. So, I know Brother Moses has a question, but I just want to say this. I What I love best about this is finding your place doesn't mean your talent. Most people don't realize it, but Judas held the money, but Moses was the tax collector. He's the one who had the skill set, but God chose somebody else to handle it. And I think God does that all the time. I think he just picks willing vessels. And you're a perfect example of if you're willing to do something, how God will take that willingness and shoot to the sky with it. You know, do fantastic, amazing, starting new ministry type things. I mean, this ministry didn't just change um, reaching souls. It changed the perception because we've learned Sunday school is family ministry that has adult, teens, and kids. But nobody focused on reaching children mm -hmm. in the way they need to be reached in ministry. And that's why we all have, and everybody watching this has an opportunity to do more than just sit in a class, but to do children's ministry. And I love that part of it. And I want to say thank you. You know, You're for your years of sacrifice. I appreciate it. Um, the, um, yeah. Uh, Moses, you got a question? Yes. Moses up. Yes, yeah. sir. Hey, Brother Squires, you talk about, you know, starting in the 70s and, and the moments that kind of just set you in, in the path of children's ministry. Was those times of weakness where you were fasting, you were praying, but look at it now the energy that you have this is what i like about you is you, you always carry the energy the inspiration and uh you bring that to the children's ministry and it's contagious every time i get around you you know it gets on me and i start getting excited but children, you have brought so much joy and excitement to children's ministry like nobody else that i've seen and so i appreciate that from you and uh, well, you do you, you do awesome. Thank you. Since you said the word joy, let me give you a little King's Clown secret. Listen up. Every morning, I don't care if I'm in the hospital. Every morning, when I open my eyes, I say these words. Lord Jesus, restore your joy into my soul. Because I don't got no joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And people say, I want my joy. Right. You don't have any. I want to shine my light. You don't have one. It's his light. This little light of mine, I understand what they're saying, but it ain't your light. And you have to understand that. You really do. It's not me. It's not me. Uh, I'm this little bushel basket that the light's inside of. And I'm, I just have to be obedient. I don't think there's enough preached and said about obedience. But being raised up in a military family and a harsh one, I guess I was just set up for it. But we all have to find that place of obedience. So I know we got to wrap this up, but I have one last thing I want to ask from you, Brother Squires. Going on the theme of what you talked about in starting ministry, there's going to be people watching this video and they're thinking, you know what? I've thought about kids ministry, but I have no talent. I have no skills. I mean, I'm just not, you know, I've had people like, brother more, I'm not like you. I'm like, well, yeah, I know that's what makes yeah. it great. But if, if that person is watching this, that's been on the fence about working kids ministry, what would be the one thing you would say to them? Fast and pray. And if you're in a kid's church and you're looking for help, fast and pray. If you're called, if the pastor says, 
Uh, I need you to work with my kids. Fast and pray. Uh, that's all I got. That's what this whole message is about. Um, I can't, you know, there's lots of books written. I don't read books. I just write them. And the deal is the Bible, man. Get in that word. And I'll tell you another thing. Here's another secret. Stay, uh, uh, most of your Bible studies should be letters in red. Read what Jesus said. Letters in red, letters in red. I want to hear what Jesus said every morning when I eat my bread. Let me taste those letters in red. And if you're if you're living Jesus' letters, Jesus' words, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. And uh, all the other studies, fine. Read the Bible through. That's like Moses, Brother Moses there. Holy cow. He's, he's on it, man. And all of that is wonderful. But when you're talking to children especially, do Jesus talk. Do Jesus' words. Jesus' principles. And uh, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. I kind of went off on the thing there. Well, and I know we got to be careful because it's not like you don't have a little bit of knowledge towards kids ministry. So we could keep this going, but we reserve the right to interview you again at a later date. Okay. I'd love to. Thank you all. The Lord well, bless. You got anything else? You, Brother Squires. You're very welcome. Brother Brother Squires, I, can I ask you, I know I kind of made a statement, didn't make a make sense or whatever but i just wanted to make sure that people knew about the excitement but you know whenever you you're around children's ministers up and coming young ones like you did for me you you always pour into other people and uh and i thank you for that thank you for My training honor. me and brother david and uh appreciate that appreciate you always doing that for others and thinking about others and and well, I'd like giving to and say, giving and giving. You're very welcome. I'd like to publicly say that you too, both of you, Brother Moises Alvarez and Brother David Moore, you had your own stuff. You know, I may have helped a little, but no, you guys are your own people, your own men, your own ministers. And that that's why I love you all. You too, you know, above some others, you know. That's why I appreciate you too. Because you had your own you had your own stuff. And We'll just drop that right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love you. Thank you, Brother Squires. Yes, sir. All right. Well, we, love you. See ya. You. I'm going to go eat my supper. Yep. We're going to wrap this up. Thank y'all so much for visiting Kids Ministry Training. See more at kidsministrytraining.com. Love you guys. Love you guys. Thank you. Love you guys.